Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Here we are back at the Maserati. We got the uh, cam caps back. They've been modified and machined. We're going to lubricate them. It's best to use engine assembly lube and get this installed. Get the oil pressure sensor installed. Get the chain guide installed. And then get the valve covers installed with new valve cover gaskets. Let's get started. If you watched the video or some of it, please leave a comment below. Let us know your experience or if you thought the video was helpful, any tips you may have on getting this job done, appreciate your time. Before you go to put all this stuff back together, you want an inventory. Make sure you got all your spacers, your washers, your screws, your guides, all that good stuff so you can get this stuff back together without any issues. All the parts you need, we'll make a list inventory in that for you. First thing I'm gonna do is put this cap in place I lubricated it with oil because I didn't bring my assembly loop and it's got a part number on there, 229170. Not sold separately. That is on the left side. Again, use assembly lube. Owners encourage me to use synthetic motor oil. Got this lubed up. Set it down here in place. Doesn't have any gasket to go under it. Falls in place like that. Now I'm going to put a couple of bolts in it and then I'm going to put the guide in here screw it in there and I'm gonna put the oil pressure sensor in there screw it down and uh, torque values will be in the comments I got the chain guide slid under there two screws in there I kept them in place on this guide they got one washer under each side I'm gonna screw those in with a T30 and get the torque specs Torque them down. This cap has the two screws that hold the uh, chain guide in place. Let me show you how long that is. Those are the longer screws. Then it's got this one that's a little bit shorter. And this little bit shorter one goes here closer to the back of the car. Make sure you get those screws in the right place. And of course the screw that holds the oil sensor in is very short that one there here's the new oil pressure sensor again goes in with that little screw I'm gonna lubricate that seal and that shaft in hopes that it doesn't hang up and pinch the seal going in getting ready to put this oil sensor in there I'm wiggling it while I put pressure on it to get it to go all the way down in place and it kind of clicked when it went in Still wiggles easy, so it should not have pinched the seal. I torque this bolt, then 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 I torque this bolt. I kind of zigzagged around. I torqued those to 10 newton meters. Not sure what the proper torque value is. That's what I used. And then I torque this bolt down to 8 newton meters. Now I'm going to put the gaskets in the valve cover going in with all new valve cover gasket <sighs> so these are hard as a rock i gotta get those off of there then the cover gasket itself i'm gonna pull that out of there and then i'm gonna see if i have this one here replace that one as well i had a spacer fall down i flipped this over make sure i have all the spacers out of it but these are really hard to get out. I'm putting new ones in. Using a screwdriver to put on the edge of this gasket and pull them up. As you can see, they're even breaking coming off the cover. And then I got the oil pressure sensor gasket as well. This is the sack that the spark plug sleeve gaskets came in. And then there was two oil pressure sensor gaskets. These are the gaskets for the solenoid valve gasket where the oil pressure sensors poke through. Oil pressure sensor check valves, part number there. Left head cover gasket, part number. 
and this one is for the right side. Either use a vinyl brush or a brass brush and brush any sludge or anything off of your top of your head. You don't want any dirt or build up or anything that's going to interfere with your seal making a good seal. As you can see there's kind of three uh, ridges along your seal line which is good. Three lines of protection. You want that to be spotless. You may even want to spray it down with brake parts cleaner or just wipe it down with brake parts cleaner and acetone with a rag after you knock everything loose with a brass brush. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to spray down in there. I don't want to change the oil. My uh, head surface is cleaned up, wiped down with brake parts cleaner. Like I said, you could also use acetone to wipe that down with. I have all of the gaskets in place. These don't really like staying in place, but work them in those grooves. Leave them in there for a little while. Uh, work that in, in the, pushing it in from the bottom. Then flip it over. Make sure it's worked in from the top side as well. And you should be ready to put this in place. Make sure that's not bunched up before you go setting that back down on the engine. Now I'm ready to put this in place, slide the spacers through the hole, and start to screw that down. I worked the valve cover in place. I pulled this to the side, got that under there. I had to massage the oil sensor through that gasket. Now I have to reach back there and feel to make sure that the back of that gasket didn't come out of that valve cover before I slide these screws in here and start to screw those down. Make sure your gasket is properly in place. It looks decent from the top, but you're gonna have to feel it in the bottom. Make sure that gasket didn't come out of the cover. The first attempt to put the cover back there with the seal in place was a utter failure. You have to put these guides in here. They will help hold that gasket in place a little bit. So I put them in the whole way around and hopefully that will allow that gasket not to flop and fall off. And I'm gonna try round two of putting this cover on. I can feel back there. See this tab if you don't feel that tab back there, that thing is out of place. So hopefully it'll stay in place this time with those spacers in it. My second attempt to put the valve cover in was another fail. So I am to a high tech solution. Get some yarn, a zip tie, some dental floss or something and tie in this end of this cover gasket. You see how I have that in there? Now, once I get it in place and set and feel this tab back there that is in right, I am going to cut the yarn, slide it out, and I should be good to go. You could probably do all of the ones on the bottom. You can see the ones on the top to make sure they're in. It's up to you. I'm going to do these three on the bottom as well. So I'm going to do all of the ones on the bottom and the one, two, three around the back. With that tied up like that, I put my hand inside the cover, a couple spark plug holes, lifted up on it, guided it back in there, lifted up on this, got it around that tube, got it over this sensor, Sit down in there, pull this forward, got that in place, and then I lift it up on the back and dropped it down a few times. When I put my hand back there, I feel that tab perfectly in place, and I feel that seal perfectly in place. Both of those humped seals are in their proper position. I feel like we are good to go. To cut these strings, gently slide them out. I'm going to slide them out from the outside. So I'm going to cut 
it in the hole and slide them out that side. And then I'm going to slide the screws in there, get the screws started. But the gasket is in place the whole way around. We are making progress, people. To get those pieces of yarn out. Wow. You need needle nose pliers and a scrap. You know, kind of like a etch a sketch type knife. So you can reach back there, cut the string while you're holding it with the needle nose pliers and gently pull it out. Took me a little while, but I got them all out. So next I'm gonna put that sensor in the back there, screw that in the cover. Then I'm gonna set these screws in, plug my uh, fuel injector lines back in, plug anything else back in here that's supposed to be plugged in here so that I can make sure that I have everything in place before I tighten anything down. I'm gonna torque this valve cover down uh, probably 10 newton meters as well and let you know how everything goes one piece at a time first thing is that rear cam sensor as you can see that rear cam sensor has a little rubber grommet on there I'm not replacing that hopefully that will still be good I'm gonna put a screw in it we got all the valve cover screws in and tight I'm starting to think these spacers that are on the screw going through the cover starting to think those actually bought them out when you torque that cover down to 10 newton meters and it'll create a good seal for your gasket i got them all tight all the way around i got the cam sensor in man that plug in there looks like it's got some kind of gasket or sealer on it let me see this in. yeah this is the other sensor, that's the new sensor. We're gonna put the passenger side cam cover and cam holder and all that stuff back together and fire this baby up and see how she purrs. First thing we're gonna do is put the cam holder on. That piece there, we got the screws here. Let me unpack that. Also gotta put this guide in place and get that on right down there. I oiled the underside of that cam cap where the cam will run set it in place then I set the guide in place now I'm setting the screws in place and then I'll set the uh, sensor on it I have all the cam holder screws in and tight I got the chain timing chain guide in and tight I got the oil pressure sensor screw in and tight I took a brass wire brush high quality one because i didn't want it dropping at bits in the engine burrs from the brush i brushed all of the mating surface of the cam cover seal with that brush then i wiped it off with a rag saturated with carb cleaner and you can use anything like carb cleaner to do that just to make that surface nice clean contaminated free now I'm going to prepare the cam cover to go back on here. I have the gasket in place. I'm using yarn to hold the gasket in place because it's near impossible to reach back there and keep that gasket in place without something holding the seal. Tried it on that side a few times, no avail. I got the new rubber spark plug well gaskets and I got the new oil sensor gasket in there. Had to pry that out with a screwdriver and I tucked it in from the inside out, pulled that gasket out and around there. So we are ready to set this in place. I'm glad I put the yarn in every hole. When I finally got this worked back there, this lower corner closer to the passenger side tire actually folded under. And I took the cover and began to bounce it up and down like this in place. Then I could feel back there that that seal flipped itself back in position so the top side has a little rubber tab on it this side is both of them are filling a hole i just hope that the seal fell back in the groove of the cover so my next step is to massage that in place which it is i pulled that back dropped that in my next step is to cut all this yarn loose and put my screws in 
And then I had to reach back there and get that cam sensor and put that in place after I get those screws in. I'm using these needle nose pliers and this box cutter to take this yarn off. So I lift up on the yarn with the needle nose pliers and I sliced it, the yarn with the box cutter. And then I just barely lift the cam cover off of the engine to slide it out. Just trying to avoid leaving yarn material in between the seal and the head. We have all of the screws in and tight in the cam cover. Again, I think they bought them out with the shank. Next, I'm going to put that cam sensor in the back. Then I'm going to put the coil packs in. Then I'm going to connect the fuel injectors and the coil pack wires. Next, we're putting the coil packs in. If you notice, the hole is keyed there, 1 o'clock. Keyed there, 1 o'clock. Keyed there, 1 o'clock. Keep back there, three o'clock. Drop these in, then drop the wires in place. We got all the coil packs in place. We got the screw and the wire harness there, the, all the fuel injectors plugged in. All right, we got the coil packs back there. All of them latched and locked. We got all the fuel injectors plugged in. We got the wire harness screw down there. We are missing the wire harness screw there. We got this vacuum tube plugged back into the plenum and clamped in place. We got this screw down here in and this tube and everything in place. All these screws are tight. You got the wire harness screw down there. Next we gotta put this back where it belongs on this certain angle. Kind of feels like it falls in place there. I'm gonna tighten that eight millimeter there. Then we're going to hook this crossover tube up, put it in the clamps, and I'm gonna double check everything and we should be ready to fire this car up, even though this fuse box is not locked down. I'm gonna leave it unlocked so we can check for oil leaks. Let me go ahead and hook this crossover tube in. And we need to lock these other tubes in. Oh, and I got that water hose loose there. I need to hook that back up. Push that in, clipped it down. Lock this in here, press that on there, it clips, thread it through the holder, clip that in, thread it through that holder, snap it down on the other side. Um, double check, make sure everything's plugged in and secure. We're going to lay that fuse box down, check oil level, and fire this thing up. All right, double check, make sure everything is connected. Seems to be good. Everything is looking good. Oh, we need to tighten this clamp down here with a 10 millimeter. And we need to find that bracket, put that bracket back on right, here. Right there. All right, we're gonna lay that fuse box down and start the car. All right, we are ready to fire this thing up. See if we got battery juice. Did we disconnect the battery? No. I guess not. She's gonna fire it up. Are you ready? Yep. <laughs> Probably starving for fuel. Try it again. Heard something prime just now. Ready? Yep. <laughs> Heard just a minor tap in and then it went away. So, seems to be running. We're going to check for leaks and report back to you in a minute. So far, no evidence of leaks and no evidence of a check engine light. So we're trucking along. I would recommend that you let the car idle for about 10 minutes before you shut it off and then finish buttoning up all the trim panel and stuff in the secure that fuse box back down and then take it for a t five minute test drive and check it for leaks. If you got a leak, have fun resetting that valve cover gasket. Now we had to push the dipstick back down in its proper position, set this plate in here, put the three screws in it, two in the front, one in the back, and then screw this to that magic plate. We're gonna pull this Maserati out and check under it for oil leaks. That oil leaks from the Volvo. Sounded nice and quiet just now when it fired up. We have a little drop of oil there. She said she had a minor oil leak before. 
so hopefully that's not fresh it's old other than that everything looks dry little drop there so I guess we're gonna go for a ride and uh, see how she sounds running there it is purring like a kitten we looked under it nothing's dripping so we should be good to go she's going to start it in the morning and see if she hears a rattling sound when she started it uh, the first time I don't think we heard the rattling that she was I heard a little bit on the passenger side right side but other than that it sounded pretty quiet if you feel that this information was useful please like it and share it with your social media friends you can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post you can follow me on Twitter and if you need to contact me directly please visit my website and if you have any questions leave them below and someone or myself will reply to them again thank you very much for watching